whatever calamity happened to you, whatever struck, any, any, any kind of calamity that struck, somebody got in a car accident, somebody got, got diagnosed with a disease, somebody's family member passed away, somebody lost a job, somebody got into a fight with their spouse and they're getting divorced, somebody, you know, walked or ran away from home, Somebody, you know, they, they, they don't want to deal with their family anymore, so they blocked every number and now they're just gone forever. You have a brother that doesn't talk to you, doesn't, won't pick up your calls, won't respond to your text messages. You have a son who hates your guts. You have a, you have a, a, a mother who just walked away from the family. It happens. There's, and people experience different kinds of calamities in life. مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنَا The first thing Allah says, no, no, nothing struck anyone ever except that Allah allowed that to happen, number one. But then the question is, why did Allah allow something so terrible to happen? Why would that happen? And Allah says sometimes in this ayah, there are many ayat on this, but this ayah Allah teaches us a powerful lesson. He says, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهُ Whoever truly has faith in Allah, Allah will guide that person's heart. Allah will guide their heart. And what is Allah saying? Allah is saying, my heart feels anxiety, my heart feels anger, my heart feels sadness, my heart feels frustration, my heart feels this person got away with something, they should, they deserve justice, they got away with it. My heart feels that it's, it was unfair, my heart feels unrest, my heart feels all of these things. But if I have Iman in Allah, Allah will guide my heart through these negative emotions. Actually, some of those negative experiences are a test of my Iman. And if I do have Iman, Allah will guide my heart. In other words, I'm supposed to go through some of these difficult experiences to truly experience guidance. I have to go, and this will be the way my Iman gets secured. And Iman is the greatest asset a human being can have. Because on Judgment Day, the only thing that matters, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ the only people, nothing will be of any benefit except people who come before Allah and they have a good heart. And the only way to have a good heart is to have Iman in that heart. And the only way to have Iman in that heart is Allah will guide that heart. And the only way that heart to be guided is to go through a tough experience and hold on to your faith anyway. And not let that be, not, that be shaken. And you stay the course. So this is, this is a remarkable thing Allah has said. In this ayah, Allah is telling us to face a traumatic experience to face it, to deal with it, but deal with it with faith and not let it change you. And this is why the best people, the best people that ever lived, the prophets themselves, every one of them are victims of trauma. If you want to use psychological terms, every one of them were surrounded by toxic people. Every one of them had their boundaries crossed. Every one of them. Every last one of them had to experience Narcissism, isn't it? Didn't Ibrahim salam have a toxic father? Didn't Yusuf salam have narcissistic brothers? Didn't they? You know, isn't he a victim of family abuse? Wasn't he being gaslit when he was being called a thief? Isn't this what was happening to them? Even Ibrahim salam was be when he's being expelled from his own home. You know. He turns back to his father and he uses Ya Abati. He turns, my, my beloved father, Ata to Shidil al Hub. He turns to his father and says, Dad, I still love you. You may not be good to me, but that doesn't mean I will no longer be good to you. And I'll still pray for you to be forgiven. La I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you still. I, I, you know, because maybe Allah will turn your heart. I can't do anything about it. I have to leave now. That's okay but I still care about you. He doesn't say, you know what? You are a narcissist. You are a toxic person. I'm glad now there's a distance between us. I need to keep you away from my own personal healing. This is not his attitude. This is not his approach. What we have done is we have created, and the, these judgments, these, these labels, they are against the fundamental teachings of our deen, and especially within our families.